I hope this is recording. Hi everybody, my name is uh, Betty Wilder and I'm the director of a quality control lab for a private food manufacturing company. I have over 25 years experience in QC and have been plating microbiological media since 1991. Probably older than most of you have been on this earth. Anyway, uh, I'm doing this testing on my own personal time. I have no personal or financial stake or interest in the companies whose products I'm testing. Uh, I have been purchased or gifted all these products and therefore they are mine to do with as I please. Uh, I can use them, I can run over them with my car, I can throw them in a bonfire, uh, and since I'm trained to do so, I can test them for bacteria. I'm only testing these out of pure personal curiosity. Uh, I have no ability to certify any results that I obtain. So, for the purpose of this video, um, I'm going to document the procedures and techniques that I'm going to be using in the testing of various lipstick samples for the presence of bacteria, coliform bacteria, and yeast and mold. The date is Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. The time is 7.37 p.m. Uh, the room temperature right now is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, for this round of tests, I'm going to be analyzing different brands of lipstick for microbiological contamination. I don't know what the allowable viable organism count is in the cosmetics industry. I don't know if I can expect anything to grow at all, uh, but we will see. These tests are qualitative, not quantitative. Uh, in other words, they will confirm the presence or absence of microbes, but they cannot enumerate the number of organisms. Uh, they will be either positive or negative, and then uh, further testing can be done if there is any growth. So I've chosen to use three media to plate each of my samples. The first one is a nutrient agar, and that is this guy right here. So this is a uh, non-selective media, which means um, it basically just has a bunch of uh, good nutrients in it that pretty much will allow any organism to grow on it. It will allow bacteria, it will allow mold, it will allow yeast. Um, the only thing that won't grow on here, or shouldn't grow on here, is uh, anaerobic bacteria. Uh, those need to be... Um, documented and plated in a special medium and put in a vacuum tube so that they're uh, not subject to any oxygen at all because that's how they grow. But just pretty much any, any old bacteria should grow on this plate. The second plate is called a Maconchi agar. Uh, that's what this one looks like. And uh, what grows on here is coliform bacteria. Uh, coliforms are usually a result of fecal contamination. Uh, they include such things as E. coli, uh, Shigella, Salmonella, um, pretty much disease-causing organisms that you don't want to um, ingest or have anywhere near your body. And the third and final medium I will be using is called Sabro Dextrose Agar. Uh, this is a selective media. It has a lower pH um, than a regular nutrient agar would, um, and that is because it is designed to grow dermatophytes, which are uh, fungi and yeast that um, can cause diseases, basically, on a human host. Um, yeah, this will grow your dangerous molds in your you know, like candida albicans, yeast type products. So, our samples today. I'm going to test them as I would any other sample. I'm just getting my notes ready here. Um, I'm going to... Oh yeah, I have to let you know, because I forgot, that the lipstick samples have been documented by me on Twitter. Um, photos have been taken of, to confirm the receipt of all of these. Uh, I can verify that all of these lipsticks are unopened by me and have been stored in their original containers at room temperature 
since they have been in my possession. So I'm going to test these uh, using a sterile smear technique. Uh, there's many techniques that you can use. You can use a wire and a loop. Uh, but for the purposes of this preliminary testing, I'm going to uh, swab basically uh, the outer millimeter or so of the uh, lipstick sample and then uh, plate that on the media. Um, so I'm going to wash my hands, I'm going to sterilize my work area, and then I will uh, walk you through the process. So have, you know, play some music or something while I wash my hands. By the way, there are other instruments that are uh, in the lab here that may intermittently go on and off depending on what they're doing, but I can't stop those from happening because this is a working lab and those instruments have to function. some gloves on. I'm going to be opening these for the first time. Let's see, we have a Lorac Ultra Ego Lipstick. Uh, the outside of this box uh, says Lorac Ultra Ego Lipstick in the shade Duchess. So let's pop her open. And again, I'm not opening the inside of the container right now. Stand up. Uh, next we have some Jaclyn Hill. Or Jaclyn Cosmetics, actually, I should say. That's technically who the, uh, the brand is. Uh, these are in the shade Fussy. Control Freak. And the shade Atari. The outer packaging. And here we have a Morphe liquid. No, not liquid. Morphe lipstick cream in the color for Evs. This one up. Oh, cool. Alright. Uh, the last one is a MAC Amplified Cream Lipstick in the shade 126 Bare Bling. Come on. Come on out. There we go. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just kind of squeeze, push these out of the way for a minute. I'm going to sterilize my work area. This is 100% denatured alcohol. Now, I'm not going to be, uh, checking any of these lipsticks for any external quote-unquote contaminants like hairs or fibers or anything like that. My whole point right now is to leave them in the state that they're in and just plate them for bacteria. That should just take a second to dry. I 
I don't have a pen. In no particular order, let's start this. Uh, yeah, I should do. Let's do nutrient agar and then McConkey agar and then the Cybron dextrose agar. So, what um, if you don't know anything about microbiology and plating? Um, plates are the medium is in the bottom of the plate, and then the top is just a lid. So I've had these, um, they're, they're all stored in the refrigerator, but I've had them out for about 45 minutes now because they should acclimate to uh, room temperature before you, uh, you plate anything on them. Um, you don't want any drastic swings in temperature to affect what you might be growing.